Thank you to Suchart and all you great patrons for helping keep this channel going. I love you guys. The rest of you, if you like our content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. The link is below. Welcome to the Twisted Tentacle Inn. I'm your innkeeper, Vase Odin, and today we will be talking about stargazing. Forbidden. 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 Stargazing is a level 1 mystic event from the Dream Eaters Deluxe expansion. It has one wild icon, costs zero resources to play, and has the insight and augury traits. It has text that reads, Max twice per game. Play only if there are 10 or more cards in the encounter deck. Search your bonded cards for one copy of the Stars Are Right and reshuffle it into the top 10 cards of the encounter deck. The Stars Are Right is a bonded encounter card and gets shuffled in with the top 10 cards of the encounter deck when you play Stargazing. As you draw encounter cards, you might draw the Stars Are Right instead, resolving its revelation effect, which reads, Remove the Stars Are Right from the game. Choose an Investigator. That Investigator draws one card, gains one resource, and may take an immediate action as if it were their turn. This action does not count toward the number of actions that Investigator can take each turn. For this video, I'm assuming that you're familiar with the bonded card rules. If you're not, check the updated rules reference on the FFG website for an explanation. So let's break down these cards and determine their usefulness. Playing Stargazing takes an action and doesn't do anything on its own. All it does is allow you to shuffle its bonded card, the stars are right, into the top 10 cards of the encounter deck. It's not until you draw encounter cards and pull the stars are right that the benefits come into fruition. When you draw the card, on first glance it seems like you get the equivalent of a free action. You get a card and a resource, the card replacing the one you spent playing Stargazing, and get a free action which replaces the action it took to play Stargazing. So net, you've gained the equivalent of a free action. If you're confused by this, check out my basic and intermediate action economy videos which are linked in the comments. But this simplified view of the benefits of Stargazing and the Stars Are Right is leaving a lot on the table and should be taken into consideration when determining the benefits and drawbacks. This card is simple on the surface, but very complex in the subtle ways it interacts with the game. The fact that you may draw the Stars Are Right in place of an encounter card is beneficial in countless ways. As a general rule, encounter cards can eat up an action or two, but there are times where an encounter card or an enemy can eat up more than four actions, so drawing the Stars Are Right in place of one of those cards is saving you that many actions. This, of course, is in addition to the action that you netted when you resolved its revelation effect. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. The card doesn't discard such encounter cards, it just delays the drawing of such cards for one round. To this, I say it's not really that simple. If you're playing solo, this can certainly feel that way at times, but consider this. If your game lasted 18 turns and you drew 17 encounter cards, taking up an average of 2 actions each, you basically lost 34 actions to the Mythos phase. If you played Stargazing and drew the Stars Are Right in the same game, you only drew 16 encounter cards. That means you lost 32 actions on average, actually 31 since you gained a net action when you drew the Stars Are Right. So basically this card granted you an entire extra turn that game. Think about how many games would go your way if you had an extra round. Not to mention the fact that if you're lucky or strategic and are able to get this card just before the encounter deck is reshuffled, then you avoided such uh, encounter cards that would have thrown off your entire game. Now, how about in multiplayer? The same concept really applies. The only issue is that you can't really predict who will get the draw of the stars are right, unless you play something like First Watch, Scrying, Scroll Secrets, or other cards from many different packs that allow you to look at the encounter deck and rearrange it. Regardless, it's generally not an issue and it's still very beneficial to the group no matter who gets the draw of the Stars Are Right. The added ability to choose an investigator to gain the benefits of the card make it more impactful despite its randomness. Although you can't really choose who does draw the actual encounter card, which in my opinion is really the strongest aspect of this card. But it's not all flowers and butterflies with this card. Playing stargazing must always be a strategic decision, and one should consider several factors before doing so. The first thing that we need to consider is that the odds of when you draw the stars are right is very low initially and increases as you draw encounter cards. When you shuffle it into the encounter deck, there's a 10% chance 
that the next encounter card is the stars are right. For the next draw, you have slightly more than an 11% chance to draw it. Your third draw is a 12.5% chance. Your fourth draw, 14%. Fifth, 17%. Sixth, 20%. Seventh card is only 25%. The eighth card is a 33%. And even with the ninth card, you only have a 50-50 chance on that draw to get it if you haven't drawn it before. Because of these low chances, it's imperative that you plan to play stargazing when you know at least 10 encounter cards will be drawn eventually. If you're playing solo, this means you need to check the act and agenda. If either one is close to flipping, and when they flip they require you to reshuffle the encounter deck, it may be a good idea to hold on with playing it. Some agendas are very short, requiring 3 or 4 Doom to advance when they ask you to reshuffle the encounter deck. I don't recommend playing this card during such agendas, because you're very likely to not see the card at all that game. Also consider that most games last about 18 rounds. If you're on round 10 of a scenario, your chances of seeing the stars are right are very low. So what this means is that for a solo game, you want to play this card very early. After about round 9, I would probably just commit it for its icons. All this said, in solo, these cards can have a major impact on your momentum. So despite the fact that it's difficult to pull off this card in solo, when it does, it can turn things around for you tremendously. Multiplayer is a bit different. The impact of pulling a card like the Stars Are Right in a two-player game is almost as good as solo, but is much lower in a game of four players. The good side to this is that the more players there are, the more likely you are to pull the card. Consider this. In a four-player game, you're guaranteed to draw the Stars are Right by the third turn after playing Stargazing, and you have an 80% chance to pull it by the second Mythos phase after playing it. In two-player games is where I think this card works best. It has a similar impact on your momentum as Solo, but you're twice as likely to draw it every Mythos phase, and you will draw it by the fifth Mythos phase guaranteed. Two-player games is where I'd most likely pack this card. Some other things to consider. It is extremely important, if you're not doing a blind playthrough, to know the encounter deck. If the encounter deck packs a lot of cards that have you reshuffle the deck, it's probably going to nullify your chances of pulling the stars are right. You're also best served playing this card early if you're doing solo or two player. This is a card to mulligan for. The reason for this is that your first couple of rounds are usually setup rounds where you're placing assets on the board and that type of thing. There is no Mythos phase on round 1, so you don't have anything stopping you from setting up your board state, including playing Stargazing. By the 3rd or 4th round and later, you may have treacheries or enemies in your threat area, and actions may be very valuable, preventing you from playing a card that won't pay off until maybe several rounds later. In conclusion, Stargazing and the Stars Are Right are game-changing cards for solo and two-player games if you play it early in the game or early in an agenda. Although not game changing, it's still very good in 3 to 4 player games and just about any time. But regardless, it requires forethought and strategy in order to benefit from such a deceptively complex card. Before you play it, I recommend you first analyze the current state of the game and your scenario that you're playing. And that does it for today's video on Stargazing and the Stars Are Right. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, leave them down there in the comments down below. As always, I'm your innkeeper, Vase Odin, with the Twisted Tentacle Inn. Check in anytime. I'll talk with you then.